for today's English message, uh, I will ask you to turn to the book of Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. So we've been studying the second missionary journey of Paul. We know that in this particular missionary journey, Paul took along Silas instead of Barnabas. And that uh, Timothy joined them, and then they uh, had a vision that told, said, don't go into Asia. The Holy Spirit said, don't go into Asia. And then when they were going to, ready to go into Bithynia, we see that the Holy Spirit said, don't go there either. If you would put up the map for me. Uh, the Holy Spirit said, don't go into Asia or Bithynia. And we see a vision that Paul had, a Macedonian man that said, come and help us. And in the second missionary journey, we see Paul uh, and Silas, along with Timothy, going on to Philippi. And we've talked about what happened in Philippi. We've talked about what happened in Thessalonica. Last week, Justin talked about what happened in Berea. And the weeks before, me and Joe, we spoke, about, uh, we spoke about what happened in Athens. And in chapter 18, we're up to a place called Corinth. Um, and uh, that is what we will study about today. If you look at the map there, you'll see that Greece is split into a northern peninsula and a southern peninsula. And a narrow isthmus that connects the northern part of Greece to the southern part of Greece is a city called Corinth. It was a place of great trade because things, goods that needed to go from Asia uh, and the Middle East to Rome would be taken by sea to the Aegean Sea. And because it was just a few miles, just three to four miles, they would unload it on the one side, on one port, and they would take it by land for three miles to the other side and then take it on to Italy or to Rome. We know that uh, this was an important city for trade, and estimates say that 200 to 500,000 people lived in this city. When we study the history of this city, we see that this was a sin city. The other name for the city was a sin city, and there were many temples there, just as we learned about uh, in Athens. In Corinth, there were many cities, uh, many temples, and one of the temples was a temple of Aphrodite. And uh, if you study the word, if you study the history, you'll see that there were uh, temple priestesses that were in the temple of Aphrodite. And there was many sin that was going on in that city. It was central for commerce and trade, as I said. It was a large, populous city of close to 500,000 people. If you look back in the beginning of Acts chapter, chapters, you'll see the beautiful gate was made out of this Corinthian bronze that is produced. So in all important ways, it was a very important city, but it was a city that was full of sin and debauchery and uh, a sin city. And it was in this city that now Paul has reached. Remember his state of mind as he has started out with many people in this second missionary journey, but he is now all alone. He had to go to Athens by himself, and he has now ended up in Corinth by himself. His mental state is something that we need to think about. When we think of Paul, we think of like uh, Rambo, or we think of like, you know, someone who is uh, uh, the Hulk or somebody like that, that is so strong in their faith, but there is a word of the Lord that comes to him that makes us think that he was afraid in this city of Corinth. So let us read that with that background, if you would put up the first scripture portion here. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, recently came from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome, and he went to see them. So uh, even though he is going alone to Corinth, the Lord made people there for him 
Akela, a native of Pontus, which is in Asia, and his wife, Priscilla, they had just been exiled out of Rome, and uh, they had been living there. And because they worked the same job, tent makers, Paul went and saw him. And because of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked there making tents. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and tried to persuade the Jews and the Greeks. So Paul, even though he doesn't have Silas or Timothy with him, is working by the weekdays and on the weekends, he is preaching the gospel, speaking to the Jews and the Greeks that were in the synagogue, as was his usual. He would first speak in the synagogues and see what reaction he would get out of the Jews. Next portion. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, uh, Paul was occupied with the word testifying of the Jews that Christ was Jesus. We can see later in other portions that Silas and Timothy came with a lot of money um, from Macedonia. And uh, this was a free gift that was given to them. And Paul was now freed up where he didn't have to be vocational. He didn't have to work as much and he could preach the gospel more days. And he was testifying to the Jews about Christ as the Messiah, Christ Jesus. But the Jews, they started to oppose him like usual, like happened in Thessalonica, Berea, and they opposed him and reviled him. He shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood be on our heads, on your own heads. I am innocent. And now on, I will go on to the Gentiles. So Paul is saying, You Jews, I come to you first. I preach in your synagogues. And you don't listen to me. I'm going on. And he uh, was probably uh, upset, but said this, Your blood is on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go speak to the Gentiles. And he left there and went on to the house of a man named Titius Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians, hearing Paul, believed and were baptized. We see a glimmer of hope that some of the people, Titius Justus and Crispus, uh, the ruler of the synagogue started to believe in the Lord. But if you look at Paul's psychological mind frame at this point, he had been attacked. Uh, we know he was stoned to almost death in Lystra. And then he knows that he's been chased out of Thessalonica. He has been chased out of Berea. And he was mocked and ridiculed in Athens. And now he is in a city called Corinth. And even the Jewish people are not accepting him, and he had to go with just a few people and started to preach the gospel, and a few people started to believe and were baptized. I'd like to focus on the last part of the scripture right here, uh, verse 9 through 11. Paul, when he was discouraged, when he was in this city of sin, when this uh, city that was full of sinners, he could have easily said, it's time for me to move on. If the people in more civilized places like Thessalonica and Berea had chased me off, uh, I probably don't want to stay here long term. And Paul, his vision changed when he had a night vision from the Lord. The Lord said and appeared to Paul and said one night in a vision, Do not be afraid, but go on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you. And no one will attack you or harm you, for I have many in this city who are my people. Amen. So here the Lord is encouraging Paul for the Lord to say, do not be afraid or fear not. The Lord had to know that Paul's heart was wavering. He had to be full of anxiety or fear. And the Lord is saying, do not be afraid, for I am with you. And we see, uh, I broke this down as three C's that we see uh, in this that is able to give courage and cure the fear of Paul. The three C's that give Paul supernatural courage that says, do not be afraid, I am with you. The first was a counsel from the Lord that says, go on speaking, do not be silent. Paul might have been discouraged and thinking, you know, 
It is the Spirit of the Lord, a man that told me to come to Europe, to Macedonia. And now I'm being chased out of Thessalonica. I'm being chased out of Berea. I'm being mocked in Athens. And now I'm coming to the worst city of them all, Sin City. All the people's heart is so hardened. And the Lord is saying, do not be afraid, for I am with you. Go on speaking. Do not be silent. And I'm sure that was a comfort and encouragement for Paul. The second C is a word of comfort that the Lord gave him. No one will attack you or harm you, specifically in Corinth. As we know, Paul was attacked in Lystra and he was uh, left for dead. He was stoned and people thought he was dead and they let him, left him there. But he got up miraculously and uh, started going back to the group and preaching. We see that in Thessalonica and also in Berea, uh, that he was chased out. He, by night, the people had to take him out of that city. And he might have been thinking about his uh, physical well-being, uh, especially in a city like Corinth, which was sin city, and all of these uh, false, sinful, lustful things going on in this city. And here, the Lord is comforting him, giving him spiritual encouragement to say, no one will attack you or harm you in Corinth. You know, you might wonder why in Corinth, but maybe the Lord had some supernatural purposes, and we don't know about all the details. Maybe the reason that Paul had to go through those things was to bring him to Corinth because he had some people in Corinth in mind. Many times when we go through sufferings and we wonder why are we going through this hardship, it may be the Lord leading us to a place of obedience to a place where he has his counsel for us, where he has his comfort for us, and bring us to a place where he will then protect us. The third C that is given to Paul is a C that says, I have a community in mind for you. You know, at this time, there was not a big church in Corinth. In fact, as I said, it was a sinful city with the priestesses, of the temple of Aphrodite, um, uh, the goddess of fertility and uh, sensual things. And uh, they were ruling the city with uh, uh, working at night for their uh, money for the temple. And so there, this was a sinful city. And Paul is told by the Lord, I have seen many people who will be saved in this city. They are my people. You need to preach to this city. You need to uh, stay strong in this city. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. After hearing this from the Lord, we see that Paul's fears were cured, and he gained courage or was encouraged. Paul st was strengthened and stayed in that city for another year and a half. I believe this is the place that he stayed the longest in his missionary journeys. And there was a beautiful church uh, a church, a body of believers, uh, a harvest that he reaped in Corinth for the kingdom of God. And we see later it is to that same church during his third missionary journey that he writes and gives advice, the book of Corinthians chapter 1 and chapter 2. We see uh, some life application messages here. I don't know what you're going through, but if the Lord is the one who has promised that he will be with us. If God has said, as Romans, in Romans, Paul says, if God be for us, who can be against us? As the prophet Isaiah says, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. The Lord, all throughout the scripture says, those who are called according to his purpose, even though when we go through trials, even though when we go through ridicule, even though when we go through beatings, the Lord has a plan and a purpose. And he is saying to us, do not be afraid, I am with you. I don't know what each person is going through. I know the family that is going through bereavement. I know the people that are starting off school and there is a worldwide pandemic. But the Lord is saying, do not be afraid, for I am with you. Go on and speak, do not be silent. No one will attack you or harm you. This virus cannot kill you. Community, get in community, 
Because there is the Lord who says, I have brought other people together. I have seen many people that are to be useful along with you to build up the kingdom of God. What great assurance we have. Whatever uncertain times you're going through, if fear has entered in, we can say, as David said, the Lord is on my side. I am not afraid. What can man do to me? Worship team, come on up. Just like David, when he faced the Goliath, uh, uh, he was able to say, you can come against me with the sword and the shield, but I come against you in the name of the living God. Just like Paul, who was stoned in Lystra and Philippi, can we say, uh, can we st uh, say, Lord, I will obey your word and I will take your counsel, your comfort, and I will obey you no matter what the circumstances I am going through. He is the way, way maker. He is the miracle worker. When we don't know what is uh, going on, when we don't even see it, he is working behind the scenes. And he is the one that is saying, do not be afraid for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I am your God. I am your Savior. Uh, the Lord Jesus, who is the creator of all the universe, the omniscient God, the omnipotent God, the omnipresent God is saying to us, do not be afraid, for I am with you. I don't know if this word is for someone who is going through something today, but the Lord is saying, go on speaking the gospel. You don't need to be afraid. No one will attack you, and if there is, there is the omnipotent God who is there by your side. I have many people in this city, and then we'll be able to see a great harvest together. May God bless you all with these words.